you're thinking of gifting some of your assets or retirement savings, there are some things that you should be aware of that gifting affects. Things like the age pension and other Centrelink benefits. While you can gift or transfer any assets of any value that you choose, if you gift within certain government limits, you can increase the amount of benefit you receive. But if you exceed the government's allowable gifting amount, your rate of pension allowance may be negatively affected. You have a gifting free area of $10,000 per financial year, limited to $30,000 per five financial years. If the total of gifts made in a financial year exceeds $10,000, the excess will be assessed as a deprived asset. This is called the $10,000 rule. A maximum of $30,000 can be gifted over a rolling period of five financial years, but must not exceed $10,000 in any one year to avoid deprivation. Only $30,000 of gifting in a five year period can be exempted. This is called the $30,000 rule. The same amount applies whether you are single or a couple. Now, some examples of gifting for Centrelink purposes include giving money for the purposes of a loan, or transferring an asset for less than its market value, so for example, transferring a car or property to someone for less than its true value. Now, the difference between the market value and the amount received for the asset can be considered as a gift by Centrelink. Now, you can put money into a family trust that you, that you or your partner do not control, or you can pay school fees for grandchildren. Now, money gifted to your spouse or de facto is not classified as a gift. Centrelink will assess all the gifts that you make to see how they have directly or indirectly reduced the assets available for your personal use and whether they have exceeded the allowable amount. You must tell Centrelink about any gifts or transfers within 14 days of when they have occurred. If you are a part age pensioner and are affected by the assets test, Gifting is a way of reducing your assets and to gain a slightly higher age pension payment. If you have some excess funds that you would be comfortable to gift to the children, and bearing in mind the above mentioned limits, then this strategy might be worth considering. Gifting can also be beneficial for an individual in aged care. Given that your assets and income are assessed for the calculation of ongoing fees, such as the, the means tested care contribution, making a gift within the allowable limits may also help to reduce costs. I hope that's helped. Thanks for listening.